What is happening guys, Cowboy here, and welcome to my blacksmithing guide for Neo 2. Now blacksmithing can be a little bit daunting in Neo, but it is a core part of the experience and ultimately what is going to make you into an absolute god come endgame. So to start things off, the first thing I want to point out is you will not unlock the blacksmith until you've completed the mission you see right here, the Beastborn of Smoke and Flames. This is a very early mission in the game, but until that's done, you can't unlock the blacksmith. So let's jump on in and the first thing we're going to do is just go through each category and then we're going to go in depth and build a set and kind of show you how exactly I go through the process. So buy and sell pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, you can buy up a lot of basic items here, special finds if you've unlocked those weapons, armor, but you're not going to use this all that much. Special finds, you might find something occasionally and items are useful, but besides that, you won't do much there. Sell, we're going to come back to in a second. Forge is one of your main things. As you progress through the game and pick up smithing texts, Forge is where you go to craft new weapons and armor. If you get very specific recipes, you can craft special weapons. Right now, under Kusarigama, you can see I don't really have anything all that special. Whereas over an axe, I have a corruption hammer right here because I ended up getting this recipe. Uh, in a similar fashion with armor, you can find sets. So we are, right here, we have the Appetite for Ascension set. Over here, we have the Servant of the God set, and these will drop from various bosses, and once you get them, it's a lot easier to craft these sets. Another thing I want to point out is with something like the Shinto Priest Gear, for example, a crafted version of the set is only going to require three constitution and three skill, whereas pieces that you find will have a much higher stat requirement to wear them. Moving on from there, we have Soul Match. Now, Soul Matching essentially allows you to take a piece of gear that you have been using that you like a lot and level it up. So take this, for example, it's level 55. If I were to pick this at level 63, you can see for a cost of 24,000, I can level this thing on up to level 63. Now, one of the things that is new with Soul Matching in Neo 2 is the rarity of the weapon does in fact matter. You need to at least use a weapon that is a matching rarity. For example, if I use this at level 45, you'll see it'll go up to 63. However, if I was to pick up a, uh, well, it's, it's not gonna work, here we go. Level 57, you can see the blue won't actually get the hero hatchets up. So you always need to at least match your rarity or go higher. Now this does make things kind of expensive. Taking the hero hatchets, for example, uh, if I were to go to that switch glaive you guys saw right there, you can see it's at 99,000 soul matching. And this is what's gonna make soul matching very hard in Neo 2, is if you want to match up a purple item, it's going to be almost prohibitively expensive. Um, as opposed to that, we can forge new stuff. So something to keep in mind, I think we're gonna see a lot more forging as opposed to soul matching, at least in new game. Uh, refashioning is pretty straightforward. When you go to refashion, it's quite literally just allowing you to pick a weapon and then pick any other appearance that you have found in the game to put over that weapon. Essentially just, uh, you know, it's fashion souls. Uh, moving on from there, we have tempering. Now, tempering is what is going to allow you to change the specific attributes on your weapon and tweak it to your particular quality. We're going to be going in depth into this in just a moment. Uh, remodeling, I still haven't unlocked yet, and I'm almost at the very end of the game. But, you know, I'm guessing remodeling will probably have something to, to do with the weapon. Anyway, point is we're not worried about that for now. And the last thing we have is disassembling, which will break down gear into basic materials. So. What we're going to do is make a new piece of gear for my character. Right now I have a couple pieces that are nice, 65, 53, 54, but these are starting to lack at 43 and 41, so I want to update those. So one of the very first things I'm going to do is going to disassemble. I'm going to go over to all my items, I'm going to tab, and I'm going to break down everything. Now you see I just got a ton of different materials for that, and to make sure we can use those materials, we're going to want to go into Forge, Tools, and then over here. Now, under the smithing materials category, we're essentially just going to hit X down on the D-pad and then just do this and run down the list. And what we're doing right now is we're essentially smelting and uh, combining all of our materials up to the highest quality. And the reason we're doing this is when it comes to crafting, this way we have lots of purple materials and ideally we're going to want to craft purple gear. It's extremely expensive to soul match, but in terms of crafting, it's not all that expensive, so it's much easier to craft a new piece of gear that's 10 levels higher as opposed to soul matching it, and that way you're still keeping purple gear, which in general is just better because it will have multiple stat boosts, uh, whereas yellow will have one, blue will have two, purple will have four. So now that we've done all of that, we're going to go uh, back into forge and we're going to go to armor. Now when it comes to picking a set, there's a couple different things to keep in mind. The very first thing you see under special effects right there, this, that little symbol that's next to it, that means that that ability is locked to that item. Besides that, there is also something known as inheritables. Let's see if I have an inheritable to show off right now. 
Okay, so those little square icons you see next to Emrita earned, this means that if I was to soul match my borehole bow onto another bow, as long as my familiarity is maxed out, the Emrita earned will transfer over to the new bow. That's what the little you know, rectangle, triangle, rectangle means. It means it's a transferable ability. And this is very important late game because there's going to be weapons that have very, very potent abilities. Things like familiarity scaling A, uh, skill scaling A, in some cases, uh, you know, huge boosts to your Omeo or your Ninjutsu. But anyway, let's jump back in and we're going to look to make a new pair of pants now. So since I'm playing a Ninjutsu build, I'm going to go for the Fuma Ninja. Um, in general, I could consider either the Shinobi, which gives me Ninjutsu power, or this, which is going to boost up my Shuriken and Kunai damage. Since I am doing a focus build around throwables, this is going to make more sense. So we're going to select that. You'll see looking at our materials that we have tons of purple and nothing else because we already took care of combining all our materials together. And now we're just going to start forging away. And it might take a little bit. Each time you forge, just add to the inventory. And the point here is we're going to keep forging until we get a purple. There we go. Level 60, which is nice and high. We can see we have the four different abilities on it. So we're going to go ahead and equip that. And now we're going to go into tempering. And this is where we're really going to make this weapon our own. So looking at it, I got key recovery bonus based on my Emrita gauge. That's not necessarily a bad ability, but it's not something I'm terribly in love with. So looking around, there's nothing that I really want. And what we want to do is just re-roll everything. Now we can use our Umbersite and your quality Umbersite. And there's two more tiers of Umbersite. These will come from higher difficulties in the game. Uh, for the base playthrough, at least, you can get quality Umbersite out of doing the Twilight missions. Each day there's a Twilight mission and doing that will net you one quality Umbersite. In higher difficulties of the game, I'd imagine we'll get quality Umbersite just from some of the gear, some of the uh, the greens and whatnot. And then Ethereals will likely drop the uh, the third or fourth tier of Umbersite in addition to the Twilight missions. So either way, we're just going to pick something. It doesn't matter what we pick. And now you'll notice that the specials that we have available have re-rolled on everything. Now, Ninjutsu power is something I want, but since I only have one quality armor site, we're not going to go for that just yet. We're going to keep re-rolling, see if there's anything else that looks looks appealing right now. Um, one item drop rate. Let's just pick item drop rate for now. And look, there we go. Ninjutsu power on an umber site as opposed to using quality. So we'll pick that up and we'll consider this ability locked in. That's something I want for a ninja build. Moving on from here, let's look at our other stuff. So we have faster wind recovery. That's a decent choice to go with. It's going to help if I get blown out of key. So we'll pick that up. Actually, I don't know if we'll pick that up. Let me see. I think I have that on my chest already. I do. So we're not going to pick that up. Uh, and the nice thing is that these won't change from you just backing out and looking at them. You need to actually select something to re-roll. So if you have an instance like I just had where I'm like, you know what? I think I have that bonus. Let me check. You can back out. And it's fine. It won't mess with your odds at all. So we have running speed. And right now we're just going through and we're re-rolling to try and find abilities that I find to be uh, attractive. You know, I guess let's pick back up uh, recovery bonus with Emrita Gauge. And we ran out of money. Now, obviously, this does take a lot of money to do this, but, you know, that is the name of the game. And this is still going to be cheaper compared to leveling up my pair of level 43 pants all the way up to 60. And that's essentially what this comes down to, is you can either craft your gear or you can soul match to get it on up. But now I have a pair of pants that are similar to what I was using before. Um, you can see we have a lot more defense because they're a higher level. In addition to that, we still have the ninjutsu power. We still have the shuriken and kunai damage, and we got a couple different bonuses. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, and this is something that's new, is if you go under all items here or armor, you'll notice that we can now also temper our uh, accessories. And this is something that people have been wanting for a long time. So, for example, this, I've already tempered this up, but I have melee damage versus poison, which is great because I use poison a lot with the ninja build and shuriken and kunai damage. And you can essentially go in here and customize even your accessories to make them fit exactly what you want. On the note of accessories, one thing I want to point out is that when you do uh, break things down with this assemble, that does not affect accessories. You'll have to go to sell, tab here, and all of your extra accessories are just kind of sitting here. So you can go ahead and sell those along with the, the junk gear that you crafted as well. 
Um, one of the last things I want to talk about is talking to the blacksmith. Now, as you continue to do uh, various things, whether it's forging or uh, crafting new gear or whatnot, you'll have requests that can show on up, and these will give you bonuses. In particular, I got a, a three level three discount on forging cost, additional special finds. I can do additional stock here. And essentially, every time you keep doing stuff with the blacksmith, you gain patronage levels. And as you gain those, you can uh, get small perks with the blacksmith. So with all of that being covered, we are going to wrap things on up. Uh, I know that blacksmithing in Indio can be quite a daunting thing. There's a lot to it, but if you take the time to go into it, you can really customize your sets. Just for example, you know, I, I know in the Let's Play, I've been kind of blowing through stuff, but I have a helm here that has ninjutsu power and shuriken and kunai damage. Ninjutsu power, shuriken and kunai damage. Uh, untouched ninjutsu, blade spin damage, shuriken and kunai damage. Ninjutsu power, shuriken and kunai. And then shuriken and kunai on this as well. So the point is, if you take the time to go into the blacksmith and kind of really craft that gear, that is going to meet your needs, you can come up with some pretty crazy stuff. And there are some really nice sets even early on in the game. Uh, just to point out a couple things, for a heavy oriented build, I'm a really big fan of this guy right here, the Yoroki set. You basically get health back every time you kill an enemy, auto life recovery. And if you have five pieces of this, basically every time you kill something, you're healing for a big old chunk of your health. So if you're playing a beefy boy build, this is an extremely efficient set to work with until you start unlocking things like Obsidian Samurai. This is actually what I'm going to recommend people use for the walkthrough uh, when I produce that series. Um, so that is one that's that's really nice. Uh, as for early sets that you can get early on, the two you saw me have already, we have uh, Appetite for Ascension here. This one's not a bad set at all for leveling since you get gold, Embreda, and key recovery speed. So you have a little bit of a combat benefit, but on top of that, 10% more leveling up and then 5% more gold. Uh, the Shinto Priest gear, a decent one as well. You reduce the damage taken from Yokai. You get almost 200 health back every time you do a purification. And you can basically chug sacred water like you're being paid to do it with a 35% untouched. Um, as a reminder, anytime you're unsure about something, you can hit the help button and pull this up. Let's see, it gives a chance for the specified item to remain unconsumed, reduce damage from yokai, restores health, and then reduce damage from yokai. So don't forget that if you're never, uh, if you're ever unsure about what something is or if it is something you want, you can always do this and go ahead and take a look using the help function. So that's going to wrap things up for now, guys. Hopefully, this video helped you out. I know the the blacksmith is quite daunting in this game, but you know, I think uh, one of the things, at least for me, that is most attractive about Neo is once you really get into the game, once you, you know, really get into the, the thick of it, you start crafting these absolute god tier sets that have every bonus you want. And yeah, it's expensive and there's a grind, but the payoff is just absolutely delicious. So thanks for coming on by. Hopefully this helped out some of you and I'll catch you guys next time.